welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with you, our tribe. I'm just going to accept that that's our intro because I it's it's what I was, I keep saying, um, and I never practiced anything else, so. That's it. That's what we're going to go with. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rushed Vibes. Our Labor Day vibes, our labor vibes. Um, I saw something on Instagram. I think, like, Bernie had shared it. and it said, put the labor back in Labor Day. <laughs> because someone's business was like, don't request any days. Don't request Labor Day off. Don't not show up on Labor Day. Like, you're going to work. Um, so... Let's put the labor, <laughs> the labor back in Labor Day. What's going on with you? It's crazy how just work dominant our culture is. It's so surprising when you have conversations with people who live, you know, in other countries, um, and you may be fretting about maternity leave or paternity leave, or you know, if you have any sick days left and you're not feeling well, and they're like. Just, just take the day off. Like you can't just take the day off, or you can't just. You don't have six months of maternity leave. What? What is? What is America? America is so Gilead. We are definitely a labor, uh, labor first and labor heavy country. Uh, unfortunately and unfortunately, right? There's this double edged sword. We're, you know, a great economic superpower, and the American dream is a real thing. And a lot of people come here to achieve their their wildest dreams and you know this is a place where you know dreams can come true but it's also very ghetto but the well i wasn't gonna go there but <laughs> but the other so the ugly side of, of it the other side of the coin is that uh you have to make sacrifices now some things are changing a lot of employers have uh, changed their tune a little bit here in this pandemic and they've they've seen that uh you know, workers can can get more done from home mm -hmm. when they're not commuting and they're not trapped in an office or a cubicle for eight hours a day. And you can get more focused, targeted work done uh, while still getting other things done around the house. Or when you feel like you have that freedom to work from home or a coffee shop or uh, Belize, <laughs> wherever wherever you are and, and still get uh, still meet your KPIs and whatnot. Uh, you know, we're starting to see some things change, but I think a lot of that is. Uh, workers, employers have driven a lot of that, right? And you see that with so many vacancies. Mm -hmm. They've said, you know what? I put these stimmies away. I've got some, some child tax credit payments coming in, unemployment. I got an extra 300 on top of whatever. You know, I feel like I can afford to, you know, be a little bit more um, careful with what I decide to do and be more intentional about the kind of work that I work. pursue. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how things uh, progress forward. But yeah, definitely um, very labor heavy, labor first country. But happy Labor Day to everybody. We are recording this on Monday, uh, September 6th. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the 6th. And uh, by the time you see this, it'll be the 8th. But nonetheless, happy Labor Day. It's a, it's a late Labor Day. But if you didn't know, because of Labor Day... Um, that's why we have weekends. That's why we have, um, child labor laws. That's why we have 40 hour work weeks. If we could turn back time, I'd say we should have pushed for 30 hour work weeks, but Hey, 40, here we are. So if you here don't know, take a moment and go look up, you know, what labor day is and what it gave us. So yeah, if you enjoy your. Friday, 5 p.m. till Monday, 7 a.m. ish for most of us. You can thank those laborers from way back in the day. They should have pushed for a four day week. And if I could turn back time, that's what I'd push for. I could for. turn back the hands of time. Is that a song? I don't know. I just, I just started singing some melodies. Because Cher has a song. Oh, does she? But it's If I Could Turn Back Time. Oh. Not the hand Maybe I was channeling my, my inner share. Oh, you. I don't know. So we just came from my parents, my parents' house. And um, 
and we finally got my dad to uh, work the grill. We, we we were we were begging him for too long all all week last week to uh, fire up the grill because my dad can throw down. Right? Yeah, I had to and pull a hail mary. I had to throw the last unborn grandchild card. Now I don't know if any of you've ever played like thirteen. It's a Vietnamese card game, and when you have a great hand slap it down on the table like when you've got the winning hand and you know everybody's out and that was my my moment we we've been we've been pushing for it for a long time because um you know he's 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 got a little a little cooking lazy um between myself and our sister-in-law like we've kind of taken over cooking so he's been spoiled. That's this really what it boils yeah, he just, down to. Yeah, he just shows up and eats and, and then takes and then, a nap. And then and then at like six fifteen, he stands up and he's he's ready to go. Like, all right, babe, ready to go. <laughs> I'm, sta- I'm standing up. So he's gotten spoiled, and I think we just we finally just got fed up. We were like, Labor Day is literally the last opportunity in summer you have to cook. This is it. To. I'm northern, so to barbecue, but in the south to Bar- cook out. Barbecue. So to have a cookout Bar- and, and get barbecue. some ribs on the grill. Like I can cook ribs, but it's I, I I know my lane. And like ribs are not my specialty. I can make good tasting ribs, but it's just not my it's not my I'm not at that level it's of It's not your ministry. It's not. I'm not a prophet in it's that not. ministry. I'm not I'm not in that denomination. I I I visit but I'm not in that denomination. That's his, he's archbishop. Archbishop. When it comes to ribs. So it's like the last time he ribbed the family <laughs> was in April. Um, when uh, my, my middle brother Daniel was here from Los yes. Angeles. Shout out to Daniel. Shout well, out to Daniel the city of Angels. Daniel was in town. Uh, I believe it was mom's birthday. So he kind of like took advantage of the situation and just lumped it in um, and thought we wouldn't catch that. We caught it. Yeah, I told him it didn't count. Yeah, so... Not accepting it. We went, and his, so we, his barbecue sauce is very distinct. Um, I keep meaning to ask him for his recipe for his barbecue sauce, but can't have it. either way, it's like, bruh, part of why I married into this family was, was for the cookouts, for the barbecue, for, for the ribs, specifically. When we got married, we requested ribs. We didn't get to eat any of those ribs because everybody else ate them. Everybody else ate them. <laughs> but, like, that's, that was the meal. So we ended up, we got, pulled that card. It was petty. It was manipulative. Uh, and I don't like to go down that road, but I did. And, and we were able to get it. So we just got home. Girls passed out in the car on the way. We were doubtful because Savi was making some noise for most of the drive. And then Solace was just being Solace. And before we knew it, they were both just in very uncomfortable looking positions in there. Salsa's neck was broken. Seriously. All the way. Didn't look healthy at all. Yeah, we got to get, well, we just, we've just recently transferred her to a uh, booster seat. So, yeah. so I think this is the gotta, first time she slept in her. Yeah, she's got to get adjusted to it. In her booster seat. So it was a good Labor Day. Got to spend it with family. Didn't have to rush around too much. There was a, there was a boggle game that I was there not was. a part of. I didn't defend. I didn't, I, I didn't place. defend the belt. I thought Jess would. Uh, I had the lead for handle, like handle one business, round, but she lost to my dad again. So I have to, uh, like, I have to come out of retirement like like Floyd Mayweather and uh, defend the title next time, defend the belt. But it's okay. You did your best, and that's I all. That's, that's all we can ask, right? So, I'm so also we, pregnant. So we do our best. So it's 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 hard to to focus. And then Savi is always like, "Oh, you're about to do something adult focused. Allow me to." interrupt you yeah sorry doesn't care yeah so that was a roundup i feel like this was a busy this past week was busy but i can't really oh i have the haitian festival you did have the haitian festival the the first ever north carolina haitian food festival it was a lot of fun it was hot it was very hot and i'm very much so anti like david is anti going to the mountains after there's like a date in October where he will not go up to the mountains. Uh, and I'm, I think it might be earlier than October. Well, my friend Matt would, will tell you cause that's where he lives. And I'm like, bro, you got two seasons of the year for me to visit after that. You're not going to see me till next, till the next calendar year. I'm convinced global warming is something like he is just really different. Um, 
it's just really, really different lately. So worked this event. It was like 88 degrees. It was hot, like miserable hot. Um, at one point, I did start seeing lights. I thought I was going to, I got really lightheaded. I was certain I was going to faint because I was standing in the food line. Um, but subtract all of that. It was a beautiful festival seeing the Haitian community. I'd say mostly of North Carolina, um, but some came from Florida, some came from Jersey, uh, some came from Fayetteville in North Carolina. Um, and they were just celebrating their food, their culture, and it was beautiful. I love seeing different celebrations throughout the black diaspora. Um, I s really love connecting with, you know, Caribbean uh, blacks and, you know, I feel like there aren't South American blacks. We'll say it's Caribbean blacks. Um, just because their celebrations, in my opinion, remind me most of the celebratory styles of Ghana and West Africa. So it's like I, I have that connection, the way they dance, the rhythmic um, sounds of their music. It's very nostalgic for me. It's like I, like, these are my people. Um, so it was beautiful watching. You know, they had the soca dancers out. They had, and I don't know how they were out. It was hot. I'm going to emphasize it was hot. They had the headdresses. But they were getting it, and they were giving dance lessons, and I wish I had brought the kids, um, but that would have been a lot, plus the hot. Um, but it was just overall a beautiful event. Worked, uh, represented one of my side hustles. Just my side hustle, not one of my. Uh, and we gave, out, we gave out free product and talked to people, and a lot of people were speaking to me in French. I can now speak French. Um, I took... I I too, I too speak, speak French. I too, apparently I look Haitian, uh, which isn't hard to do because you're black. Um, and it's funny, I had a moment, there was one woman who had been helping me and we were talking and we connected really well. And I just thought she was black. Like, just like someone would just look at me and assume I'm black. And then, you know, she got on stage and she started speaking, you know, Creole French. And I was like, oh, wait, sis, you told me you were from Jersey. Like... It didn't even dawn on me the possibility of her being Haitian. But that's like the fun thing about, you know, being in the black diaspora. Like someone can be black and yes, they're black, but their black can be rooted from somewhere else. So right. that was really fun. Um, sac passe to my, my Haitian listeners out there. Um, and Haiti is definitely, I think I've said it before, but it's on my list of, of countries to visit. Uh, it's, it, I I take a lot of pride. I'm not Haitian, obviously, but I take a lot a lot of pride in Haiti, and I feel like Haiti definitely showed, like, yo. Shout out to uh, Haiti. Blacks can do it. Shout out to Haiti as they, um, I imagine, are still recovering from yes. the latest um, hurricane. Pray for Haiti, because that country just deserves a lot of favor from God, in my opinion. But, I mean, they, they deserve a lot of respect from just the black diaspora, because they were the first black country to gain their independence. And then they still hopped over the border and they were like, okay, brothers, we'll, we'll set you up too. So Haiti, my heart goes out to you and your people are good people. And I can't wait to visit your homeland. Yeah. Um, also seeing as this is, uh, this is Monday we're recording. Um, it'll be, it'll be old news by the time we, uh, we air, but, um, we, uh, just found out that, uh, Michael K. Williams passed today. Um, for those of you who, uh, that name does not strike a bell. If you watch the wire, he's the infamous character, Omar, uh, and more recently was in, um, Lovecraft country, Lovecraft country, uh, and passed away at the age of uh, 54 today. So That's rest so in good. peace and condolences to his family. Um, you know, we've, uh, yeah, we've, we've, been a rough couple of years mm -hmm. we've, we've lost some uh some people who we've we've been able to uh to really um appreciate and 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 value their performances and in, in front of uh the camera you know this last year and a half a lot of people have been stuck at home with uh, no recourse but to consume media mm -hmm. uh and and you know I, I know people feel a certain way about hollywood these days about being liberal liberal elites or whatever but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you, you, we do value these people. They do mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, and The Wire being one of, in a lot of opinions, one of the greatest shows, if not the greatest show in, in television history. Um, he played, uh, Michael played an instrumental role in that. So rest in peace to him. Uh, condolences to the family. 
Um, we definitely lost a uh, titan uh, of of Hollywood and in front of the the screen, and um, it's definitely sad news definitely. to uh, to hear on this uh, this Labor Day Monday. So I just feel, wanted to uh, I feel for him because I had listened to an interview that he had done. It was on the radio, so it must have been NPR, one of those side shows. And he was saying that because of his scar, he always gets like, it defaults him into a certain type of role. And this one, I don't know, I don't know him by name, but you know, they were talking about, and this was a couple of years ago, but they were talking about his, you know, filmography. So then I was able to figure it out who he was. And I was after listening to that interview, I was actually looking forward to him getting like a good guy role. Um, so I was really championing, championing him. Um, so I'm really like, I think that's what got me down the most because I know that as a performer, he, he had more range, but you know, I mean, there, there are some, if you have a certain look, you kind of get typecast into certain types of roles, but he had potential to, and I think in this particular season of just, you know, black excellence in, in performance, I feel like he could have, um, he could have been able to channel that. So I do feel for him that, you know, he's done some great performances, but I feel like maybe a part of him was incomplete in, in terms of not being able to be like that super sweet dad or that soft role because of his overall opinion, but uh, appearance, excuse me. So may he rest in peace. And like David said, our condolences to his family and his fans, of course. Seven, yeah, seven. heavy, heavy stuff. Um, so we were actually, this episode was supposed to be, uh, we were supposed to have a guest, but um, due to some scheduling issues, we weren't able to have them on. So uh, we'll look forward to uh, to getting little little big brother Alan on here uh, pretty soon. But um, we'll, uh, we'll jump to the show next. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. So stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. And we'll see you after the break. And we back. And we back. And we back again. Oh, so, Rush Vibes, episode 40, Dose. You sure? No. Because you had some three. At this point. Did I have three? I thought I went At like first that. you went three and then you dropped, you dropped 42. one. Yeah, it's 42. Uh, so I think before we're done, we will have at least 50. Uh, we might not yeah. get to 50. Because we'll go next week. Now, if we go through October, that'll be four episodes. I'm banking on being done in six weeks. Oh, so we'll finish this shy. So, darn. I was, hope, I was a, hoping. I'm officially 30 weeks. I was so. hoping I was hoping we'd get to 50 episodes before we took our um, our season one. Our, I mean, you could do a solo break. episode. You can bring, no. a guest, bring a guest host. You should do that. You should be like. Uh, the last time. Well, I, it'll have to be somebody here because the last time I did a solo, just a little intro when we had Bethany's episode and we were so we we recorded with Bethany the day before. And I, what happened? And then was we I were sick? supposed to record our intro and outro and then you weren't feeling well. So I was like, Jess, go upstairs, lay out. I got this. I can do this. And that was March. Oh, so it's because I was pregnant, but you didn't know. <laughs> Might have been, yeah. So um, Hi, I didn't tell him. I was like, yo, I, I got this. And then I got on. I got here. I was like, uh, hi, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hey. Uh, and I was in the bed upstairs listening to this. this it took like it, it like three. I took like five takes the first time, and it was just like a two minute, two minute intro, right? I just needed to do the hi, hello, hey, say hey. This is an episode with Bethany. You do a solace. quick blurb. Let Jeff, let you all know that Jess was upstairs, not feeling well. And then that was it, because because we already recorded the interview, so all we had to do was just cut to it. And then I, I would have had to, and then I had to wrap up, but I was just struggling. I couldn't so get the lighting right. It, it was it. it was weird being like dead center on the camera, no Jessica here, nobody to play off of. So it's it's weird. So people who do solo podcasts, like I have so much appreciation and respect for you because it's not easy to sit here and have a conversation basically with yourself and like transitions and you have to be on like self-aware to know okay it's time to move on to this next topic because i've done all i can do here and just talk into a cam into a microphone and add a camera for 30 45 minutes into an hour it's just it's not easy it's not as easy as as you would think i feel like it'd be fun to do a solo podcast i think if if i didn't have to do it at the last minute yeah, more and preparation. yeah more preparation and i'd done it like before because i was just like my first time period um I probably could have 
have, it would have been a little bit more, uh, it would have been much smoother. But I think I think rush. I think we work so well because we we play off of each other's energy, and that's at least that's a lot of the compliments we've gotten is that our chemistry is is really solid, which is a good thing because I was like, if we have bad chemistry and we're married, like, <laughs> what I mean, is that? It, it happens. What, is, what does that say about us? It happens in these so, streets, people. So fortunately enough, we're 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 a good team. But yeah, maybe we'll do. Maybe I'll do like one or two guests because I've I've had a few people who are like, yo, we're going to pod, we're going to pod, um, but I don't know. We, I, I'd have to see. Them done. Yeah, I don't want to just, you know, bring anybody up here. Like, we got to make sure that that the vibe is right, and um, maybe that's something we'll experiment with going forward. Because I think we should do like a ladies episode where Jess gets up here, either does her solo thing or she has like a guest up here and she gets to interview somebody. I think that that would be cool. I think that's um, some of the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not flexibility, but uh, versatility. Some, you know, I think we just mm-hmm. can 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 afford to switch it up next season um i think we'll actually have a production calendar next year rather than because right now we basically shoot every week um and if we have a guest we try to get them in that week and then we run it but um i think we'll do a lot more planning next week as we introduce another kid jobs so we'll be a little bit more uh organized uh, for organizing and forward thinking but actually use calendars and calendar reminders that would be good it would be and actually have one of our production meetings like our calendar reminds us of every single Wednesday at 10 p.m. We but like we never one have. And a half. We had like one in bed, and then we talked for like 20 minutes, and then went to sleep. I think I fell asleep first, and he was just like Jess, Jess, and that, that was it. So in this this week, we had another album drop. C B O, C L B. I don't do well with that. Mm. Anyway, I actually What's listened. <laughs> Okay. Go this ahead. is why this is why I don't I usually just wait to be exposed. I actually went out of my way and listened to it. I liked what I heard. Uh I enjoyed it. I did not listen to the one that rhymes with Wanda. Um hater. still such a hater. I'm going to hear it. I just I'm not going to go out of my way to hear it. Um, so I, I feel like you're about to do a thing that we don't always have to do when two albums drop like either simultaneously or I'm not going to compare each them okay. to each other okay, cool. I, because one I haven't listened to the other one um, both artists are very unique in their their own lane so I don't want to I don't like I don't really like comparisons uh, that's how street beef start yeah I said it uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is how beef start. Like it's just unnecessary. Like someone can just be an artist and do their thing. Did you really just say street beefs? Street beefs. That's not a like a term. I mean, it was in like the mid nineties. Okay. <laughs> it's not, I was born in the early nineties. We don't have street beefs no more. Um, it's not that rap is so like uh commercialized. It at is, this point. but people still like to to peg, especially like female rappers, they like to peg someone off of someone else and this person street is, beef wow. so you know wow that's the angle i'm coming from so it's not easy they they both were on the same they are on the same label so i feel like their labels were just kind of like we don't we don't want to drop them at the same time let's force let's force one out and then let's force the other out um i've seen more attention from ladies for clb um but i just think that Drake is just one of those, like he just appeals to the ladies more than than you know, Yeezy. But his name is Yano, actually. Whatever, I like pick an, If you're gonna pick a name, stick with it. The Look. only people, the only artists who need to change their names it, deeper into their career are anyone who has a little or baby affiliated with their name. Well, so so uh, Pup Diddy has gone through like several name changes. So he was Sean Combs. And then he was Puff Daddy. And then he was Puff. It was a Puff. And then now he's Diddy. He's been Diddy for no, a while, No, isn't right? he Love now? Oh, I don't know. I stopped. He's got like Love tattooed somewhere huge on his body. He's 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 changed his name again. Snoop was doing the most changing his name too because he became Snoop Lion. I remember that. And Snoop it's, Lion. It's like, what? Are you on Empire now? Like, what's, what's going on? Wasn't he on an episode of Empire? He probably was. I feel like he, everybody was on Empire. I think... <laughs> I think Jess had a cameo in Empire at one point. The they were shooting in Charlotte, and she was, was one she walked past it. I was like, "Cookie!" Walked past the camera. <laughs> so it's just 
it, it's it's a lot, but um, it feel it it's nice that in my opinion, mu- it seems like music opinionated is truth. my opinionated truth. It seems like music is picking up again. Uh, there are some artists that kind of just leave us hanging, and we just have to wait. But they're also kind of the gatekeepers to musical entertainment, and yeah. it seems like a lot of people are you know respond to how they what they put out so i i was happy that these albums were dropped i uh i keep i want to become like a i keep saying i i guess the easiest way i just want to become like a head of of all these different like i want to become a sneaker head i want to become a music head like i just want to become those people who appreciate those things but it's a lot of work like i was i see people in like these these sneakers and I'm like, oh, I want some like really nice sneakers. I want to be hip to it like that. Um, so when the street beefs pop off, I, I, I got good kicks on. But it's like I don't know where to begin, and I always wonder like, how do people become good at these things? Like, how do you become a sneakerhead? And then how do you also get the funds to afford this lifestyle? Because you know, a hundred fifty dollars for some J's. Um, Man, I don't think you're getting J's around the 15. You might see? be paying like 200. See, I don't even know. I'm not even sure what J's are, to be completely honest. Jordan, okay. right? No, number one, we're, we're about to cut. <laughs> okay. You, know, you usually had street beefs. <laughs> you don't know what J's are. Okay. They're Jordans, right? Yes. Okay. But you, I need you to be a little bit more confident when you speak of those things. Cutting this. Anyway. For goodness sakes, Jessica. Anyway, I mean, I you know how long it took me to get Air Force Ones? Like, I had to wear champions. Were you stomping? Were you stomping in them? I was not. Because uh, they were a size too small, so my feet hurt <laughs> when I finally got it. Do you know what it means when some, someone's, wearing, someone's wearing black Air Forces? They going to fight somebody? They're probably, probably going to fight you or they're going to rob you. <laughs> really? Why? So if you look on Twitter and, like, somebody, like, there's, like, a fight video... Normally, in the replies, someone's going to zoom in on the feet of somebody, and they're like, "Yep, should have known." They got the black forces on. Why? Because they can't get you stained. Want, you don't want to mess. No, they just it's just like universal. Just like like a code. Shoe? You don't want to mess with somebody with black forces on. I mean, I mean I've they, seen some fights start because someone has scuffed like someone's white forces, and I'm just like, it's white yeah. shoes. Like, you, what, well, that's the thing. Like, if you're if you're part of shoe culture. Or, oh, a, or a sneakerhead, yeah. You don't cre- you don't you don't when you don't crease your shoes. You don't let people to step on your shoes. Like I remember, I mean, that was even the case back when I was in school. Um, I mean, I do remember that. So. Yeah, like you wouldn't like go oh, in. You stepped on my, you my shoes, man. And kids would get the little, uh, the little had the little wipes that mm-hmm. Foot Locker sold. They would have those like in their book bag. Like or why you got why you got shoe can? wipes in your book bag and you don't even have books in there? Like <laughs> why why There's why no are you room for the books with the spray? So uh, no, I like. Sneaker culture is one of those things that is very consistent throughout at least my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Like people have always, I think it started like with Jordans. I think Jordan was a big was a big um, uh, catalyst for that, if not if not the main one. Um, but yeah, you got to be you got to be in the thick of it, man. Um, and and you have to be prepared for heartbreak, right? Because there's like a, this sneaker app where you they got apps for these. Well, yeah, it's a sneaker app, and they like they announce drops like when they're going to drop certain uh, editions of sneakers and you basically have to go wait for the drop and go into the app and try to try to get them. And so a lot of people, it'll tell you, (laughs) it'll show you a picture of the shoe and it'll be like, didn't get them. (laughs) So like a lot of people, they'd be in there like heartbroken because they couldn't get, they couldn't get sneakers. So, um, yeah, maybe that's just not in my way. And you also got to be prepared if you in the wrong, wrong side of town, like, Somebody might try to jack you for your shoes. Like it's, it's crazy still out here. Do that? That's why I wear all birds. <laughs> nobody's jacking me. Nobody, will no, jack nobody's gonna roll up on me like, hey, bro, come, come up off them all birds. Like nobody's nobody's checking for all birds. So, um, and I feel like I'm walking on clouds. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I steer clear. I can't remember the last pair of like high profile shoes I bought. I can't even. Like just to wear like recreationally, not to hoop in mm-hmm. or whatever, like for a purpose. I can't even remember. I had, it, it was probably, probably in high school. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm one of those people where it doesn't, I can't justify paying that much for a shoe that I'm only going to wear like once or mm-hmm. with like one outfit that I can only rotate once every like 15 weeks or whatever. Um, I, I don't get, it. I don't see the value in it. So, um, but 
at the same time, I'll spend a, a ridiculous amount of money on like technology, like things like this, um, and have done that for a long time to uh, to my wife's <laughs> dismay. Back when we were dating, it's like I, I always had a new device, and I was always like flipping uh, to to get the next device. So I understand everybody has their thing. Yeah, um, I don't think I've ever spent more than fifty dollars on a pair of shoes. Yeah. Like the like the most high profile shoe that I'll buy regularly is probably like Chucks. So I'll, yeah. I'll get I'll get a pair of Chucks like every year. Like look, or maybe a pair or two. Probably get like a black and a gray. And, some and then the and then that's it. I um, got my first pair of Vans, but I got them at Ross for like thirty dollars. I got some Vans too. I don't think I got the right ones though. They're like suede or something though. Oh. So that shows you I don't need to be in the shoe store Pro- by myself. Professional Vans. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, like I, I I bought them to like go out uh, go out to work. So, and another thing about shoe culture is, like, you'll notice on Twitter when, like, dudes be proposing to women, they'll make sure their foot is, like, straight down so that they don't crease, <laughs> crease their shoe. Seriously? Creases are, like, there's one thing you don't do if you're, if, if you are a sneaker head, there's one thing you don't do. Shoes. You do not crease shoes under any circumstances. Okay, then I can't be a sneaker Yeah, you head. can't, you can't do it. Because that's too much thought. I think about, like, kids, like, oh, I got to bend down to tie my kid's shoelace. I got to, I'm not. You gotta either squat, you gotta drop it, like drop like you're about to get your eagle on, or this you gotta put your. <laughs> that's not you gotta drop it, um, or you gotta like you know put your your shoe straight down like that. But I want to go back. Are you, did you have anything else about no. the sneaker? So I want to go back to the uh, the album thing with uh, the street piece. <clears throat> say say, say it one more time. <laughs> I actually am enjoying saying it. Say it one more time. I will. I won't. We will cut. This will be a 32 minute and 30 second podcast. Um, how do you feel? Oh, yeah. We're asking me a question. Yeah, we're, we're going there. So how do you feel yeah. about separating, um, the artist from the person? Because, uh, we've seen this, right? And let's, let's stick with, with, uh, music, rap okay. and hip hop, right? So you had Chris Brown, right? Who, who like beat up uh, Rihanna. Um, you have R. Kelly. Say no more, right? <laughs> and then you have uh, uh, Kanye, who was out with um, President Trump, like when Trump, before he took office, uh, after he won, but before he took office, you know, how he brought like all the, 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 the pillars of the black community up to Trump Tower, right? Steve Harvey was out there. Kanye was out there. Did Steve know why um, he was out there? Well, Steve said, I think he said someone asked him to go. I can't remember who it was, but he, he went because they asked him to. Um and Kanye was in the in the Oval Office when Trump was there, and he was a big, you know, he was he was um, pushing Candace Owens and all these people. Um, so a lot of people who are more liberal um, or or tend to vote Democratic, which would be a large majority of the black community. Though the black community is not a monolith, but majority of black people don't really get down with um, didn't get down with Trump. If you're looking at voting records or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, so a lot of people feel like he did harm because he was to use uh, a term that was associated with Obama, he was palling around <laughs> with, with Trump, who a lot of people saw as like white supremacist and, and whatever. Um, so a lot of people feel like that's unforgivable, mm-hmm. right? Like you, you, you committed the ultimate, the cardinal remember sin. Those videos from college, unforgivable. I do remember those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I will never, I will never, I will never ever be upset at you. <laughs> For a drop for bringing up unforgivable <laughs> videos, we can look. We can cut the rest of this podcast. We can talk about unforgivable the rest of this podcast. I love the unforgivable videos. Now I, they I are don't know why that they are vulgar. Mind. They are not suitable for work. Do not listen to them around to go back and watch around it, young children. It's been like twelve years since I watched. But the it. unforgivable videos, they are all time great content. If Instagram was Do a thing back then, a camera. A dude holding a camera and another dude in the woods, and it was just, dude just sh- straight in front, like oh my gosh! I'm sorry. Oh my gosh! I'm so they, sorry. it's just they're you said amazing. It and it triggered no, unforgivable. I, I'm not upset. Okay, I have no problem. Back to your um, question. <laughs> if you can form it. So uh, a lot of people were like that. I can't. I can't get down with Kanye. Right. A lot of people said they wouldn't listen to any music he dropped past that point. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I even said this to you, like Kanye gave us college dropout, mm. um, late registration, mm. graduation. Like Kanye gave Kanye is a Hall of Fame level 
uh, 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 hip hop artist. Mm-hmm. So I, how do you feel about um, artists who do things that in the mind of public opinion or in the mind of yourself are unforgivable? Are you still, are you able to separate them from their person and still support their music because it's good or because you enjoy the music that they've done historically? Or do you just like lump everything in one and you're like, nah, I can't rock with you. That's such a, that's such a finite. No, not finite. That's such a difficult question. Loaded question. A lo- it's a very loaded question. It's like a loaded potato. It, there's a lot of layers to it. So, I'm I'm weird. Like I'm a weird. I know I'm a yes. weird demographic. Stop. Because <laughs> you say things like street beef. Yo, street beef's are thing. Like is this like is it is it beef that's like killed in the street and, and prepared? And I mean, like, they make it in a lot of like like in foreign countries, like street food, street vendors, like China and stuff. Incredible. Um, so it's it's tricky because one, I appreciate good music, but I'm not one of those music heads who's gonna be like, yo, he was spitting and dropping bars. Like I don't even know how to use those terms properly. Uh that line was fire. I I, I, <laughs> I don't think anybody's gonna have any trouble <laughs> believing that you don't you don't know how to use those terms. Um, but it it's weird because I bars. <laughs> I understand that every performer is you have to put on a persona. It's 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 probably too mentally exhausting to be the same person that gets on stage and performs, that's signing autograph, that's you know, that's working in the studio. That's too much. I know, you know, Beyonce has her she has Sasha Fierce, she has Beyonce. Um so I think I know from my perspective, I there are some personalities I can mesh with and some I can't. And a lot of it is who do I think I could genuinely hang out with? Uh, I loved Kanye, but I've always known that he's got this arrogance to him. I'm not a fan of arrogance. I'm not a fan of I'm the greatest. I'm not, you know, I don't, I like humility. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that he was necessarily wrong, but I don't know that he was right either. Uh, I just love the thing when he got his first Grammy and he was like, y'all go ahead, get the music ready because it's going to be a minute. And then he did his little speech and he was like, everybody wanted to know what was going kind of going wild out because he had, he had been up for several awards and he hadn't he won. So he would, he would, he would make a scene. He'd be upset because he thought he should have won and he probably should, arguably should have. Mm-hmm. Everybody was going to say, what would I do if I didn't win? Then I guess we'll never know. Yo, yo, and I I rock with that. I lo- I love I love that. But he's 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 insane to me. Um, he's he's a he's an insane individual. But I think with the with certain talent with certain gifts, it's not expected for you to be civil. Or normal by society standards. I, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think people have trouble with with unique or different individuals. I'm, I, I guess I may, maybe I didn't phrase the question properly. I meant more so like people who do things that are seen as like unforgivable, mm-hmm. unforgivable acts. So for a lot of people, it's like, yo, you can't, you can't rock with Trump and be in the Oval Office and and support Trump and be in the Oval Office and wearing a MAGA hat yeah. and think I'm going to support your music or you can't. Um, you know, hit women and be convicted of or be, you know, charged with it and then found guilty of it and think I'm still going to rock with your music, mm-hmm. right? Like you can't be homophobic and be proud, proudly homophobic and think that I'm still going to rock with yeah. your music in the case of Bootsy, right? So like in those instances, like for you, ooh, excuse me, it's platinum. For you, is it possible to separate do you think we should be able to separate the artist from the person or do you think supporting the artist is in a way supporting the person, which means that we're supporting, you know, their, the act their, they, the act that, or their antics? I think it's tricky because I think a lot of it depends on what rapport they built with you as a, as a fan prior to them committing said crime or prior to them, you know, being exposed for, you know, said act. So, you know, by the time the Chris Brown and Rihanna situation had popped out, you know, he, he had already established these songs that legitimately made me say, 
yo. <laughs> um, like hit, like when when yo would come on, I would like you know just you have that emotion. That I think I was in maybe I was in eighth grade or ninth grade when yo and it was just like all the girls we would sing it and it was just like you know you wanted that puppy love feeling and then like i was in the the black student union we did an annual show and um run it was a song that we danced to so like i still remember like parts of the dance routine so it's like i i have a a nostalgia with with chris brown so even when the, listening to no more chris brown in this house so even when like the incident took place i don't even know that i got all the details it's not it. an incident he punched me on in the face i know talk about incident like you trying to try to trying to but i mean <laughs> trying to try to lessen it trying to underplay it nah he punched a woman he, in the face he did punch a woman in the face i'm sure she punched him back too rihanna looked like the type that she don't play from barbados yeah she don't play um so i think i was in college i might have been my freshman year when all that went down and a lot of the girls like got upset i remember one of my friends she got really upset about it because her mom had been in an abusive relationship so she was anti-domestic violence but she loved chris brown so much that she was like legitimately torn um so again i think it's about the rapport that this said artist has built myself like you mentioned r kelly now you know i i've told you i've joked about this a million times like remix to ignition something about that song i know all the lyrics to and recently i was driving i now that i'm working i'm driving a lot more so you know i just have songs on shuffle and i picked a random artist that i felt like hearing so you know r kelly got put into the shuffle and the remix to ignition came on and i'm like bumping it i'm i'm dropping these bars yeah i said it and maybe like three-fourths of the way through the song i'm like Guilty oh no conscience. it's r kelly <clears throat> but i'm already in the song now I fortunately didn't get to get into a lot of his songs. So it was oh, like, uh, I mean, you know, sheltered upbringing. So, you know, somehow I, I got remixed to Ignition. Played a lot of R. Kelly. I believe I, I, believe I can fly. Did it for love, yeah. He had one song with Celine Dion. That's why we did it. <laughs> but I did had the Celine love, Dion album, yeah. and that's why I knew it. But I wasn't like... I'm your angel. I'm your angel. So I wasn't really big on R. Kelly, so I can I'm okay with canceling him. I think the the one significant was Trapped in the Closet where I like had to go out of my way you to know. watch it. And I still don't even know what it was. Trapped about. in the closet. One chapters one through twelve were, were There was were, more than were, twelve chapters. Yeah, I think they, I think you, you kept going. You shouldn't have. But yeah, one through twelve were great. I don't even um, remember the content of it. I just remember a midget in the just, closet and and jumping on so it was a whole mess i'd have to go back and watch it but i can't watch it because a, me he's a mess is a mess is, is very accurate um uh, uh, to pick the description so for me personally i didn't have enough of a relationship with his music to right now be like oh man we lost our kelly yeah i mean well those are just examples like we were talking about music so those were the the the, the three uh, examples that came to mind but you can think of like anything like now people are um, like with vaccines have become political. So mm -hmm. you have athletes who are for it. You have athletes who are against yes. it. You have uh, teams that are mandating, professional teams that are mandating uh, vaccines. You have others that are like, you know, personal choice. So you have people kind of like Teetering picking, yeah, picking sides. It's like, how do you, and that's, I guess that's the danger of everything kind of becoming politicized. Uh, it's like people feel like they have to pick, uh, side. pick sides. Otherwise you just, lumped into like oh, people just throw the blanket on the goal will you support and you know you're anti-vaxxer or you're mm -hmm. you're you're against personal freedom or you're for uh you know men beating women or you're for uh homophobia or you know you're for white supremacy like it's it, it be, it's 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 almost like people want things to be so black and white and and, it, and there's just possible. there's a lot more nuance in in life in general but let's uh take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll okay. continue this Oh, you didn't fight me on that one. Nice. Yeah. Cause so. Okay. okay. I was, I was, right I was going to bring us back in, but that's okay. I mean, they know it, this, the break sound is, pss, it's like 30 seconds. Oh, okay. So you listen seconds. to it now. Okay. I've always listened to it. Okay. I don't I mean, watch it. You don't it. watch. Okay. So Jessica doesn't, she doesn't help us give views. Basically, is what she's saying. She doesn't support Rush Vibes. But like you, like you loyal our five seven tribe year viewers old out nephew there do. watches and gets us views um don't know if that's a good or a bad thing but anyway so i think when it comes well, now to he's going to be walking around talking about street beef 
So I don't know. I, mean, I, don't I think, think Sarah, Sarah and Donna will thank us for that. I don't think that's the worst thing that. Daddy, do you know about street beef? <laughs> I mean, there's street tacos. There's Korean, like there's Korean street beef noodles. Anyways, um, so I think, and Un- this is the trickiness. This unforgivable. Is, <laughs> I don't. I hate that I said that, but it was just the way you said it. Yo, I, lo- I oh, I love those videos. I'm gonna have to go if there's. We're I, gonna watch them tonight. We're gonna lay still in bed. online. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yo, I don't even. Anyway, so that's the problem. It's like when you have talent. And you also have a vice. Now, vices are human. Like, everyone has some kind of vice. Like, my vice is Trader Joe's um, and Amazon. And I guess I have a shopping problem. Um, that's my vice. I think that's also his vice. What? Um, like, just buying things. No. It's not true. How many phones do you have? One. How many phones do you have? I have one phone. How many phones do you currently have that have, can be utilized? I have an iPhone 11. Max Pro Pro Max whatever a big iPhone <laughs> and I have a, f- a phablet I have a foldable device I have That's a surface Panos Panay the chief uh whatever of devices or whatever of Microsoft for- I, forgive that, me they sound like a dish Panos Panay it sounds like a like an Italian dish. um he called this is a surface device it's not a phone it's not a tablet it's a surface device it can be a tablet it can be it can make calls Anyway, but it's not a phone. We're not going to deviate. I use it as a, as a utility device. Everyone has a vice. But I don't. But no, 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 no. You're not just going. You're not just going. You're not just going to accuse me of just buying recklessly like you do to make yourself feel better and think I'm not going to kind of have a re, have, have a have a rebut stuff that's and not necessary. Stuff that resi- the stuff that lives in the house but isn't necessary for the house. Yeah, but when you use it, you're like, oh, Jess, this body scrub is just first of one. It's facial scrub. Not body scrub. What'd you say about the... I should tell what you said about the Trader Joe's body wash, but I don't want to embarrass you. What did I say? (laughs) Oh, the peppermint? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was it. I don't want to put your business Yeah, I can't. can't. Well, no. Well, so, all right. No, we'll we'll talk. No, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll take a tangent. So, uh, Jessica, she... Look, I'll give her props, right? Like... My flowers. my, My wife is on top of, like, just the most random products that you wouldn't think affect your life, but they do. So one of those things is body wash. So it was like a few months ago, I think it was during the pandemic, she started bringing home uh, this body wash from Trader Joe's. Now I figured it's from Trader Joe's. All right. So it's probably going to be organic, going to be healthy. It's not going to have a lot of the dangerous chemicals that, you know, Dove and what all those people put in their, in their, in their products. So I just got used to it. Like that's all that she had been buying. I think for like the last year, at least if not more, so I noticed, I think a couple of weeks ago, she had switched it up. She bought our um, Arm and Hammer, I think. Yeah. And I was like, "Yo, where's the?" I got it from the dollars. Like, where, where, where's the, where's the, the, the Trader Joe's, right? And then, I, what did I say? Like, I can't use like, it because, because like she, it's peppermint. Uh, it's, it's peppermint and tea tree oil and, and tea tree oil. Um, so when I would when I would scrub certain areas because it's peppermint. Yeah, I'm just gonna say what he said. <laughs> it would be tingling. I was like, just use the arm and hand because he was using the bar soap, and then he was complaining, and he was like, when are you gonna go to back to trade? I said, you don't want me in Trader Joe's because I buy more than I actually need. And he was like, well, if you gonna you already put me onto this, you gotta buy it. And he was like, and I like the body scrub because it makes my balls tingle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I like it. I just said it is it's. it's it's unique I, cause it because it makes, <laughs> my, it makes my balls tingle. So I guess that's like zestfully clean. Like that makes it's you, how you know it's working because when the tingle, when, yeah, when the tingle, when you feel the tingle, it's like, all right, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and arm and hammer ain't hitting like that. So I'm skeptical. I'm I don't gonna, think it's I'm doing, go to I don't week. think it's doing what it's supposed to do. Cause even solace has been like, so are you going to yeah, get me this, this, like this, this peasantry arm and hammer up in here. And we don't know. It's we don't paraben do the, free. Yeah. So, whatever. It so, ain't, it ain't peppermint. <laughs> Tea tree. Okay, we're going to make a U-turn and go back to the destination. So, everyone has vices. Musicians have vices. They're, they cigars can, are my vice. Cigars are his vice, um, among other things. Um, it's just cigars. I mean, politicians have vices. We all have vices. Sexting. <laughs> sexting. Uh, only fans. Anyway. Uh, wait. Shut sexting. Politicians. Oh, I thought you were saying you Oh, no, sexting, no, no, no. no like, politicians, wait. they like to sex. Yeah. Uh, or do the little foot thing in the bathroom. Remember? 
Who yeah. did? I can't Anthony, remember. Who Anthony Weiner. No, um, it wasn't Weiner. No, it wasn't Weiner. It was somebody. Yeah, it was somebody else. It was older. Like an older, older guy. Older guy. Um, <laughs> I don't know why these just, random things. Which are is which is out. wild to me. Not <laughs> not that you would be attracted to men, but that just you have like a tap routine <laughs> for like a, a tap public routine. bathroom. Yeah, like that's, you so that's you so down call? low that you got to come up with some. That's the mating call. Yeah, if you if you like. If you like, if you're a man, you like men. Just like, just, just own it. Out. Be, be yourself. We'll support you. Yeah, if you're a woman, and you like women. It's not right. It's 2021. It is. Like, we're, just we're whatever. I, I guess at that point it wasn't 2021, but, but still, still, it was far yeah, enough. Yeah, be, be who you are. Yo, if you if you were in a position and you feel like because of your stature you can't be who you are, you might want a second guess mm-hmm. doing what you're doing. Because look at Buttigieg. They just adopted twins. They just had twins. Yeah. I don't know if they adopted them or if they had them, but they just had twins. Hey, I mean, um, like, you like who you like. That's no big you, deal. Boo. Just don't get in no street beefs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you know what? That little tap routine got him in a, in a street beef. Oh, my god. Anyway, gosh. back to my point. Everyone has vices, and I think the more talented you are, the, the stronger you have to be to fight your vices or the weaker you will be to come to succumb to your vices. I think it's such a challenging decision as the fan who's fallen in love with this performer because of their music. Because music is is a spiritual experience. It's not just, you know, like music takes you somewhere. Um, You could just... There are very there are some music you listen to and you're just listening to it, but there's some you're you're in it with the artist. You can feel yourself in the studios. You the lines that they're saying, you can relate to them. They they penetrate your spirit, and so I think it's very hard that when someone does something to immediately cancel them or cancel their work. They can be canceled. But I don't know. So you can separate the I work you, from the person. I think you can separate very, the work from the person. It was a very, it was a very roundabout way it of was. saying, um, saying it. Because, you know, people can do bad things, but also do, like, I mean, look at Cuomo. Cuomo has done some great things for the state of New York. He's also done some very questionable things that have now landed him outside of politics. Um, but the the good things that he's already done has, have been done. You can't take that away. Um, you know, if, if let's say, you know, God, Drake does something bad, you know, he already did, you know, God's plan and put that, that woman through college, um, and was just, you know, just handing out cash and that it was it Miami. I can't remember, but you know, the good, the good has already been done. And it's unfortunate that when someone has a vice, not saying that Drake has a vice, um, yet, but it, the, the, it's unfortunate when, you know, someone does do good things and they, they, their bad behavior comes out and, you know, everyone forgets the good things they've done. And I'm not, it's such, it's, I don't know if there's a proper way to say it because you've got someone like R. Kelly who was wild and had wild people allowing this stuff to happen around him. But, you know, his work was, was powerful. I mean, to the point where he's, he's got cred on um, Drake's recent album and, you know, Drake's a little under fire for that too. Yeah, cred. Street cred. Sure. (laughs) Street cred, not street beef. I um, I'm, I'm, street I'm, I'm very close to being deceased over here. Cause street cred. Okay. Uh, so, so it's like he's he's a talented individual. Who? R. Kelly. Okay. When it comes to music, sure. His personal life, his persona. I mean, and and I've watched, you know. His, that document, not his documentary, but the documentary about the women he's abused, and I feel for them because I can't imagine that being in that state. Um, and and his talent is what makes it so complicated for people to decide where to put him because you know he was there. He impacted so. There are so many artists who are who they are because of his contribution. Sure. But then you have someone like like Kanye. He's he's just wild. Um, I will say I had, I won't say I canceled him, but I was kind of like, I'm a back off. And then I did that, um, research study where I had to, um, I think I can talk about it now. Mm-hmm. I'm like 60 trouble. days out. Okay. Um, and I had to, I guess, I think Netflix is dropping a, uh, a docuseries on, on Kanye. So I had to watch the first episode with like a research group and it was so amazing and so enlightening. And I just remember thinking like, like, 
almost falling back in love with Kanye, like original Kanye, like watching his struggle, watching, you know, re remembering the things that he, like the artists he helped, the artists he produced tracks for. And it was like, wow, yo, Kanye is, is something else. Like not even his music, but just how he's contributed to music. And then it's like, he does something stupid. And I'm like, I have to, I have to go back to the documentary to remind myself of it. So with him, He's tough on me because it's like I love him, but I hate him. Yeah. But I can do without him. Sure. But I also know that music needed him. Yeah. I think uh, this kind of this is like a, a stream mm -hmm. that leads into a bigger body of of water. That is the whole cancel culture conversation. Yes. And a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't exist. And a lot of people are like, yeah, it does exist. Yeah. And I think um, I think whether or not you're able to be canceled is it depends on your i think your stature and who you are and i, I think i think I, we may have even said this on on a recent on, on, a, on a former on an earlier pod where it's like it just depends on who you are yeah. and as it pertains to if you can get canceled or not because um, you have people who who've <laughs> people have tried their damnness to cancel them and they they just won't yes, uh, and i think kanye is is one of those now look i think kanye is a um, is a tremendous artist uh top one percent of creatives in the world um, I wouldn't say of all time because I'm only 33, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, definitely in, in my lifetime, uh, there, there are few, uh, artists I think who are as creative or more creative than, than Kanye. And I think when you, when you deal with that level of, when you're, when you're considering someone with that level of creativity, um, and, and creativity isn't something that just, I think it's something that just happens, right? You, you have to go through, um, like like processes and you just have to get yourself like it doesn't just come out sometimes a lot of times you have to channel it you have to bring it out so you have to do different things and 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 things that would seem like abnormal orthodox. to the unorthodox and, and abnormal to someone like you and me um so mo most of the more creative people in in the world or have tend to be a little different mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of you know society standards but that's how they're able to give us like the the gifts that they that they give us and that's their their creative um their creative output so um <clears throat> there was there was a time where uh, I, I remember on social media people were like nah i'm not rocking with kanye no more and i rock with kanye and his last few albums i honestly i didn't like um i tried to listen to I that i knew he had dropped yeah he, he had put a few out and i didn't really get with him um but but this most recent one donda i've i've like I said, I couldn't get through the first, I couldn't get past the first six songs because I kept repeating them. Did you ever get past them? I went out yesterday to, uh, to wash the car and, and ended up oh, li okay. listening to the, the entire album. Um, it's good. There's a lot of songs on there. There's a lot of songs. I think, I think a couple of them have like part twos, uh, but they, no, they were, they were good. It's very good. Um, I think, I think the decision on whether you can separate the artist from the person, I think it's, it's, I think it's an individual decision. Um, everybody has the right to feel how they feel. Um, um, and I don't think that it's as black and white as, oh, this person did X, Y, Z, and you still listen to or still watch or still read their work. Therefore, you support mm -hmm. whatever they did because we're all, I think we're all better than our worst moments. Like people make mistakes and people do things. Now, if there's nah, repeated, if, if there's are. repeated, if there's repeated behavior that's different, um, but I think generally speaking, for me, in, in my conscience, um, I tend to separate artists from person. Um, and you know, if someone is doing something grimy or, or harmful enough, you know, uh, usually karma and, and life tend to work out that they're not in a position to make music or movies or write books anymore because you know people don't hire them for their work or they get they get put away like the case of r kelly i think he's gonna go away i think he's gonna go end up going away for a long his trial's going on right now but i think he's gonna end up going away for a long time um but i do think the more talented an individual is the more well you know what that isn't always the case unless some people are just underground because you think of someone you know someone would argue that you know jay-z is a talented musician rapper i don't, um, think, any, I don't think that's arguable <laughs> i think that's pretty but, pretty widely accepted but i say that to say that he doesn't to my besides his you know his freestanding um locks that are irk me 
Um, I'm going to start rocking up joints. No, you're not. I'm going to rock with Jay-Z. Uh, he doesn't have any vices. Like, he's... Besides, I mean, Becky with the good hair. But... Um, and whoever else might be in a song somewhere. But he doesn't have any, like, vices where you'd be like, bro, you're doing a lot. Yeah. Uh, someone like... that, But there are artists that... You know, like, think of Bieber. Think of... And maybe it's a difference of when you come into the industry, your age, your circumstances. Because uh, Jay-Z was a lot older, so he'd already, like, kind of lived through some life. Um, so maybe that kind of helped. Uh, I feel like Kanye was younger... I know in the documentary, like they said, he was, you know, harassing his, he was harassing producers yeah. at, in, in like his teens. Like his mom had connected him with some producers while he was a teenager um, and he was harassing, like tr trying to be up under them. So maybe because he's had so much, so many years of exposure in it. Um, then you got someone like Bieber who like Bieber fell off and then came back and I don't know what, where he is right now. He might be off. He might be on. Um, but it seems like the more talented, the 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 deeper someone can go with their skill, the the harder they fall. There, the harder they're. It's almost like there's a part of their brain that if you're able to channel that part of your brain, it like cancels like the common sense logical side of your brain because you're and i mean people have said that about Beethoven. They've said that about you know Mozart. That these people were you know so gifted that it it took over their life. Um, mm. and they were, they were deemed insane. People thought yeah. they were crazy, but it's because the gift that they had was so overwhelming. Now, I don't know if there's any like logic or science to this. This is me just, you know, with my Google psychology, um, PhD regurgitating it back to you and my own opinionated truth, um, thoughts that I'm giving. But I do think that it's one of those to whom much is given, much is required, but I feel like there's a caveat that it's like, it's also going to cost you a lot. Yeah where it can cost you, you know, relationships. It can cost you your family. And even actors. There are lots of great performers in all calibers of, of performances that they've, because of their greatness, it's almost like they've lost their ability to be part of society in how we expect people to fit into society. So I, I think a lot of artists are like that. Um, and if you don't create... That's why I think it's important for artists to create two personas. So when you're in your zone, this is your person. So that you're not... And I don't know that someone like Kanye has done that for himself. I feel like he's just always Kanye 24-7. Yeah. As opposed to like, this is stage Kanye. This is Kanye who's going home to my wife and... My former wife and kids, etc. So I think... I th I just think there's a lot of therapy. Like, it's really just the age of mental health. And it doesn't matter what you do or who you are. You just need mental health support. And I think someone, the more gifted you are, the more you need to take time for yourself to speak with a professional and make sure you're handling your gift and you're expressing yourself properly. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the gifted people are gifted from pain, are gifted from suffering, and that's what they're outputting into the world so it's a lot yeah. but there are some people that yes they do need to be canceled but it's tricky it's true yeah. and i know someone's gonna come for me because i said you know so, i still like the remix to ignition yeah but, well i was listening to a uh, same girl the other day the, the joint r kelly did with usher it, all hit and it took me back to like see it's the nostalgia. like middle school i'm <laughs> singing same girl which is kind of wild in and of itself but um so uh last thing i wanted to touch on and you may not be aware of this i know you're kind of on Twitter, but you're not really on Twitter. Is it a street beef? No. It's not a street beef. Um, Is it but, daddy? No. Definitely not. No. No. Um, <laughs> Y'all go find out why trick daddy's trending. So, there, uh, there is a corner section. I'm going to try to do this quickly so we can wrap. Um, there is a section of Twitter. You know, we talked about Shikari. There was like sports Twitter, There's black so Twitter, Twitters. feminism Twitter. There's different corners of Twitter. Um, a notable one is LLC. Twitter and um, there are some gatekeepers or there were some gatekeepers who are more, more, more notable. You generally see them uh, retweeted when it pertains to starting your own business and being, uh, being, you know, hustle culture and uh, doing different, you know, multiple different streams, passive income. So the thing about social media is that it's very easy to um, pretend to be somebody who you're not. Um, and if you're believable enough, 
and you post the right sort of content that would give you social proof of whatever you're speaking about that would make you make others seem to think that you're an authoritative figure and whatever you're talking about, you can get pretty people to pretty much do anything, buy courses, send you money, um, contribute to crowdfunding for real estate. Um, there was a, there was a big blow up in LLC Twitter. There was a, there was a certain, certain guy, I won't say his name, um, who was more, no, more notable at one point and said he had over a hundred million dollars net worth. Um, and it turns out that he was basically scamming people <laughs> because when he was showing screenshots of like his Tesla stock or whatever, there's this app where you can basically, it's almost like a calculator where you can put in, if I have this many shares, my net worth would be this, but it, it presents it as such as if it's, it's a real thing. Like you have real, your stocks have real value, whatever he would screenshot and say, yep, you know, my value went up or whatever. Um, and he was saying he's big into real estate and people were sending him money thinking that he was going to use it to flip and then give them profits. Uh, and it turns out that basically like most scammers do, you get money, you put it into, you get, you, you run a scam, you get money, you put it into something else and you think you're going to take the proceeds to pay back. But by then you've made a profit. So therefore you're not really losing anything. But as most scams do, it catches up and then people start looking for their money. And when people don't get their money, they get suspicious and they start digging for stuff. And he got found out in a very big way. And he had been on multiple podcasts. Uh, there's this really big business podcast. Uh, I think it's called Millionaire Mindsets. He had been on like three or four times. They pulled all his episodes. Um, everybody came out the woodwork saying, yeah, he owe me money. He owe me money. He said he's going to do this. People bringing up the screenshots and the text or whatever. He was, people were saying like, he's worth a hundred million, but he couldn't wire me. He was trying to send me 10, 10 K through like Venmo, <laughs> whatever, instead of wiring. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it got really ugly and a lot of people turned on him really, really quickly. Um, I think cause you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. Mm -hmm. Um, but I use that sort of as a parable. Um, if there's anybody out there who's impressionable um, or who's kind of down to the luck and kind of looking for, for a way to do something a little, a little bit differently, maybe not doing a nine to five, but kind of going out and, you know, maybe starting your own vending machine business or cleaning business or insurance adjuster. Um, I would just say move with caution. Chances are um, anyone who's on Twitter bragging about um, how much they're worth and saying, and they're, they're basically in a different profession, like every other week, mm. chances are, uh, they're either not, they're, they're lying or they're, they're doing these things, but they're not doing it at the level that, that they do. So general rule of them, I, I never send people money over the internet who I, who I don't know. Um, and I don't have, I don't send money people I do know. and I have no, no way, no verifiable way to, you know, like say verify that they are who they say they are. Um, cause it's no different than like Bernie Madoff, right? Like any other scammer, like generally speaking, it's the people, um, who really need, you know, who have good intentions. They really just want to put themselves in a better position who end up getting hurt and getting preyed on and losing money. And, um, I think the thing that's most, most frustrating about it is this was a black man whose primary targets, um, in terms of the people that they're scamming were, were black people. So it's like, you know, that's, that's unfortunate and you hate that that people would do that to people of their own kind um, who are already worse off economically or uh, financially speaking in this country by far compared to other demographics. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why would you keep your own people down? So I just wanted to, to bring that up. Um, I'm not a part of any, any, any corner of Twitter, but definitely not LLC Twitter because a lot of that there's, there's too much of that shit going on. And more times than not, it, it turns out that somebody's scamming and it, it's always the same. Um, and the scams run different lengths. Sometimes it's a long time. Sometimes it's a short time, but in the end, someone always gets found out um, and people get hurt. So um, a lot of this, a lot of these courses you sign up for, there's a lot of free information on the internet. You just need to know where to look. You need to know, learn how to use Google. YouTube is free. Um, but you know, just protect yourself, protect your pockets and, and stay away from, <laughs> from sending money to people, um, online. Uh, so yeah, that's just, it's just crazy. That's all I have. We got like four minutes left. I don't know if you want to respond to that or give your thoughts on it. I know you, like I said, I know you're on Twitter. You're not really on Twitter. You're, you're kind of in and out. Um, I imagine you hadn't seen any of that, but I was I was kind of all over it this past weekend. 
Um, but if you don't have anything to add, we can. I mean, I wasn't out. familiar with this. I just, yeah. you know, I think about back in the day. I mean, it wasn't my day, but someone's day where it was like, if you're going to, you don't rob women, you don't rob like pregnant women. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I know that's such a stretch, but like, there are just some, there are people that you, you're supposed to go after. Yeah. Um, and people who you, you should, are. It's not and something who you, you should aren't. do. Yeah, people who you shouldn't go after. But, you know, if you are going to take advantage, like, you don't take advantage of grandmas. Your own people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I apologize if it's your people that we're referring to <laughs> that should be taken advantage of. I'll take advantage of. of anybody, but definitely not the um, people. But it's, it's, it's sad. But I also, you know, I feel for people who have, because you have to be a certain type of person who is going to believe these things, especially after years and years and years of schemes. And, you know, like I, anytime someone comes to me with an MLM, I'm always hesitant because I figure if I'm not at the starting level, like if you are not coming to me as like person number two, like, Hey, we just started this. We want you to be a part of it. I'm always hesitant because I figure by the time it trickles down, it's, it, it, it's too much work to, to pull more people into it. People aren't interested anymore. It's not fresh. Um, but I, it says a lot about, and I don't know how it is in Europe and other countries, but it says a lot about just the American system, the American economy, the, the American mindset that there's still hope that someone can get rich quick. Yeah. Cause it's, it's not, it's not a reality. Even people who get rich from being influencers, from being, you know, from utilizing social media, it's work. Uh, there's, there's no, America has, is not, unless you're already born into it. America is not designed for people to just get rich. There is an element of, of legitimate pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. I hate seconds. that statement, but there, there's an element of work that, that everyone has to put in if you're going to gain wealth that you're not already born into. So, you know, I'm not a financial analyst, a specialist or anything by any means, but you know, if it, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. It is. And, you know, you say if you've been able to save money, save that money, look into investing, look into, you know, great savings, high interest yield savings accounts. But when it comes to like handing your money that you've earned to somebody that you don't know, even somebody that you do know, I, I, I'm I'm weary of it. So I yep. feel for all the people who have lost their funds. I hope that they're able to like, what did he do with this money? Like he's got to still have it unless he was living a lavish life. Who knows? But I feel for these people. Um, I don't know this man. And stay away from those damn susus. Yes. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. But I know a lot of that came out last summer. Of like, oh, black people, we got to get together and rise up. It was just people trying to scam. You yeah. they take advantage of the moment. So stay away from Enjoy. those. Um, so, yeah. Buy uh, some stock. Buy some stock. Episode 42 of Rush Vibes. We appreciate you guys. Um, Team Rush Vibes is 30 weeks, so we're starting the countdown. Countdown has officially started to baby Rush Vibe member number three. Hey, I think we're going to try to get uh, little, little Big Brother Allen in here next week, so uh, stay tuned for that. Y'all have a good week, short work week. Um, be safe. Don't catch the Delta uh, episodes every Wednesday. Thanks for rocking with us on social media, YouTube. We love you guys. We out. Be safe. Now, now they bring me this far to let me down. 